Hey everybody, it's Sarah Saxby, your transformation coach at Strategies for Happiness, author of Comfortable Hell and Guide to a New Way Forward. Today I want to talk about those of you out there, and I'm going to say women because that's where I'm coming from. Swap it out if you want to, don't care. Um, women that don't feel happy, don't feel fulfilled, feel hopeless, feel frustrated, feel like they're rushing around every single day, being distracted, uh, going to bed at night and doing it all over again. Uh, the women that have forgotten themselves, the women that have been turning a blind eye to keep the peace, the same, you know, same drill I, I constantly talk about. Just feel like I have a different way to look at it right now or to speak about it. Um, and uh, also the women who are, <laughs> that I am speaking to, are the ones that can't handle one more fucking thing. So you want to change. You want your life to be different. You want you want it to feel different. You want it to you want it to change. You know shit needs to change, but you're like, please don't give me one more fucking thing to do. I don't have an hour to sit around and listen to something. I don't have an hour to read a book. I don't have time to go to a retreat. I don't have time to go to a class. I'm not going to journal. Don't tell me to fucking journal. I'm not going to meditate. I can't relax enough to meditate. You're speaking my language. If you if you understand what I'm saying there and it pisses you off just to hear that you have to do one more thing to change, I hear you. This is where I'm coming in because this is what I'm learning about myself too, um, that I don't have the time. I don't have it. Don't tell me, stop. like when I'm frustrated, don't, yeah, you know, sometimes things work for people. Sometimes people love to go on retreat. I'm not saying don't do it. If it works for you, do it. But the people that are struggling to find a second but really want to change, this is for you. So one thing that I thought that came to my head uh, was from Eckhart Tolle. Now, I, I don't know if you know Eckhart Tolle. He's actually um, somebody who has been a big part of my world uh, with his teachings and his writing and, and stuff like that. Um, Power of Now, A New Earth, good stuff. Anyway, long story short. One of the things that he says uh, said was, if you complain, you make yourself a victim. So you have three options. You can leave the situation, change the situation, or accept it. All else is madness. Love it. Here's the problem with, with, with us, women, including myself, is that it's a cop-out. We say, oh, I, I've just accepted it. And you're lying to yourself. Eckhart Tolle didn't mean, when he said accept it, he didn't mean turn a blind eye. That's not what he said. He said accept it, meaning that you are wholeheartedly, you have come to peace with it. You're never again going to complain and uh, you truly, it, your soul has accepted it. I think that's the biggest bullshit lie that we tell ourselves because we don't want to leave the situation because that's hard. Somebody might not like us or somebody's going to get pissed or we're not going to be the angelic martyrs that we fucking try to be all the time. Uh, we don't want, it takes a lot of work to change a situation, you know, because you might not be heard. You have to pay for it. You got, you know, your, your, your partner, you know, is a jackass. They're not going to want to change. Blah, blah, blah. So you know what? I'm going to accept it. You know how many, you know how many people I talk to every day where I just look at you and I know that you're just accepting it. And you know why I know? Because I live it. I have lived it. So I can see it. And it's like, you know, you, you can journal all you want and you can take all the classes in the world and you can read all the books in the world. But if you are turning a blind eye to something in your life, that is not right, and you're calling it acceptance, you're lying, period. And why? Ask yourself why. It, you know, and there's people that, you know, are say married to someone and this person is abusive, they don't work, they just sponge off of, you know, their partner, um, they have, addictions, habits, they don't, you know, you don't share the same goals. 
You don't share the same dreams, yet you keep this person around as a warm body. Why? I mean, I can, I, you know, I've shared plenty of reasons why I did it. You know what I'm saying? Now I'm in that, that, that transition mode where I'm tra trying to figure out why the fuck I was able to put the blinders on and live in a particular way that I never liked. I, and I've said this before, I have never, ever been myself, ever in my life because of people, because of people around me, purely because I don't want to upset them. I don't want to lose them. I don't want someone to think that I'm a jerk. I don't want that someone to think I'm a bitch. Um, you know, my God, what if, what if I have to start over by myself? What's worse? What's worse? Getting to know yourself and start in, 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 you know, opening up this new path that's scary, but like, or, or, you know, like just lying to yourself every day, waking up and, you know, brushing something under the rug that you know, you know, like I said, I, I just, I, I know these women that, you know, they're in abusive relationships. Clearly, they don't live, you know, they, they've taken on the hopes and dreams of their partner or they're just kind of cruising along and they won't even look at it. They won't even look, that, that's the one thing they won't touch. They're just like, oh, well, this is my, this is my husband and, you know, oh, you know, I, it's okay, it's fine. It's fine, everything's fine. But you know it's not. You know it's not. And so you say, well, I've just, I, I found my peace with it. Bullshit. <laughs> Prove it. Prove that, you know, you're waking up every day and you have somebody with you that is, is your biggest cheerleader. Is your partner your biggest cheerleader? Do you do some really fucked up things sometimes and they're just like, girl, come on. Like, I got you. I got you on this. I know, you know, you can be a little crazy, but I got you. I got you. You know, do they support, you know, it's like, it's kind of like, you know, you, you, you're, you love traveling by yourself sometimes, you know, it's like something that you just has always fulfilled you. And you, you end up with a partner that's like, yeah, that's not right. You're not doing that anymore. And you're like, okay, well, you know, I'd, I'd rather be with this person than not. It's balance, people. It's not, it's not you give up everything and turn it, you know, just to keep the peace and to keep this person as a warm body. Why are you lying to yourself every day? I mean, I woke up every fucking day and said that, that somehow this was going to be better. And, and, and I had to dread every single night of my life. Every single night of my life, I had to fucking be yelled at. Every night. And, or I had to please him or be yelled at. And I somehow told myself that I will live with this. I will live with this. Why? Because we had a nice house? So I could be financially in a better off position? Or I, you know, if God forbid, if I lost my job, then at least I had a partner to, you know, help me. But I was okay with it. I was okay with, you know, never being taken care of and always being bitched at if anything was wrong with me, you know, but, but I was like, that's okay. It's not okay. It's not okay that I was living like that. And, but this is what we're doing. And so when I say, I know you don't have any more time to contribute to your transformation, I get it because I felt like it was just one more thing, but I'm telling you, it doesn't have to be anything major. You don't have to go on a three-day retreat. If you want to, do it because I'm sure it'll be amazing. But if it feels exhausting and daunting and you're like, please don't fucking tell me to go on a retreat, I can't. Face that one thing. Start the conversation. Start the... You know that you're on the right track Everything else, everything else, if it's easy, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. You are on the right track. If you're about to have a conversation, if you're about to face 
the the one thing that you swore you wouldn't you wouldn't face say say you're about to have a conversation with your partner that you swore you would just put up with and live with for the rest of your life to keep yourself in the suburbs you're about to have a conversation and say look I'm not happy and you will want to throw up you're going to be sweating your your heart is going to feel like it's going to beat out of your chest and you're going to sit there and, and your your ego your opponent whatever is going to say don't do this you don't have to do it just forget it go back everything in your mind and body is telling you not to do it you're on it that's the only way you know you're on it is that you're sweating you're literally you could pass out because you're about to have a conversation you're about to say whatever it is listen I'm not happy and I don't want to live this way anymore. I'm not happy with X, Y, Z. You know, here's where Eckhart Tolle comes in. You leave, you change it, or you accept. But don't let the acceptance part fool you because that's where you're lying. That's where you're lying. Have a conversation. The one you swore you would never have. The thing you you told yourself you would never face that one thing will literally catapult you into another 10 levels levels of you of you who you are you won't even believe it you will not believe what your day will be like if you can have that conversation with a coworker, with your boss with your partner with your kid talk about tough conversations have a conversation with your kid something that has been bothering you, you, but you you didn't want your kid to be mad at you, right? Say something that you you know you really want them to come home at a certain time, but you don't want them to be mad at you. So you're just like up waiting all night, panicking, but because you don't want to have the conversation. Where is it? Where, what have you been avoiding? Make a list. Make a list of five things that you you you're even afraid to write down. Seriously, guys. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be this big, you don't have to read 15 books. You can literally catapult yourself. If you will just write it, just write it down. Take the step of writing it down. It's where you're turning a blind eye. It's where, it's that thing, that pit in your stomach where you're like, God, I just still have to deal with this. Every day, that's what I did every fucking day. I'd wake up. Send me an email, uh, you know, Sarah at strategiesforhappiness.com. Um, you know, go on, you know, Comfortable Hell, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Um, share this. Who the hell else? Who do you know? Who? Because you know, you know, you can see it in other people because you have it. So, good Lord, share this. We're going to do this, guys. We're going to figure it out. Looking forward to hearing from you.